Hello, Frugal Force. This is Captain Frugal reporting for duty, and today I want to do a brief video on how Angry Joe pretty much said what most of us were thinking about The Last of Us Part 2. Alright, Frugal Force, I just want to remind you, make sure you stay to the end of the video to get the question of the video and see if you can answer it down below in the comments to get that coveted no prize. Well, 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 Angry Joe. Hmm, Angry Joe, just for those that follow this channel, no, I am not uh, uh, necessarily an Angry Joe supporter, and I don't mean that like I don't like his videos or things, I just call it as it is. Sometimes I don't agree with Angry Joe, sometimes I do, uh, I probably side more with him on game reviews and less with him on when he gets into his own personal takes on current events. With that said, The Last of Us 2, a lot of us have been saying a lot of things about the game. Like, we thought the gameplay was fantastic and everything else, but there was flaws in the game. No way it deserved a 10 out of 10. And Angry Joe, I'm, I, I give him props here, he didn't bend the knee. He didn't bend the knee to your narrative. And Angry Joe is a, a reviewer that I watch on occasion. I I don't always watch his stuff because I'm not a big fan of the yelling that he does a lot and that turns me off on that. I just, I, I don't like it. I was like, eh, I'll skip and go to something else. But there's, I do watch it. I'm not a big fan of his sketches either. Some of them are funny, some I just don't care about. And, and so I'm not saying anything bad about his channel. He's just, he's an occasional watch. How about that? I'll put it that way. Anyway, I watched this video. He did a very long review on this game, but he hit a lot of points that a lot of us were saying, a lot of us were thinking. And and I love how Neil Druckmann, all that, think we're haters, we're bigots or whatever, and they're going to call us all these names when he m misses and neglects the main point of what the gamer said. Us that have played The Last of Us, we, we grew to love those characters. The, the Really, the first game, the gameplay was good, the graphics was good, I mean, gameplay could have been better, uh, but it wasn't, it wasn't bad. It was quite good, and it handled everything well enough, and the story was fantastic. It made us really enjoy and, and, and get into these characters and grow with them, and that led to the biggest part and the failure of The Last of Us 2. The Last of Us 2, Angry Joe says, in which I, I agree, I think, with all of his points on the game, the game mechanics were absolutely fine. No issues there. They didn't really do anything major to update that and change it any there, but they were good enough to begin with, and they're good enough here. Then, on top of that, the graphics were absolutely amazing. Now, I don't own this game. As uh, a matter of fact, I only play it. My brother has it, so I got to play it some on his, and that's how I got to do that and see how it is. The graphic graphics are absolutely top-notch phenomenal. Probably the top that I've seen for the PlayStation 4. So that, that's definitely great. The audio is fantastic, too. The cinematography is good. Okay, let's, let's call it as it is. But where the game lets gamers down is the story. As I said, we grew to love these characters. And how Joel was treated, not just the fact that he died, but how he was treated and how the story goes forward and never has any conclusion to wrap it up. It just is nonsensical. Some people might go, well, you got to st stop that circle of violence. And I understand that. But let's be honest here. Like she goes through all this to get even, killing all kinds of people to get to Abby. But when she gets to Abby, she doesn't finish the job. It just doesn't make sense. At that point, she killed all kinds of people she didn't even know. <laughs> so it, it just doesn't make any sense for her to stop that cycle of revenge at that point. So in Angry Joe brings up the plot point that I thought, too, that, that makes a lot of sense. I think it would have been better if they redid the story. For example, having you maybe meet Abby and then play as Abby for a while. Really get to learn about Abby. And then, you know, Abby and Ellie get together, get friends, and then, boom, find Abby finds out, wait a minute, 
Joel's the guy that killed my father. And then we would have had a really boom, mind blown moment that would be like, oh crap. And that creates a big divide. It would have been a lot more impactful than the way we got it. Because the way it was, we shortly after Joel gets killed by Abby, we play as that very character, Abby, and nobody really wanted to. I think a lot of people killed Abby intentionally <laughs> on their playthrough several times just because it's like, oh my gosh. And don't get me wrong, Abby's fun to play as. I mean, her, her physical physicality, being able to punch dudes out and things like that was just pretty balls of the wall cool. But it's it just, you didn't want to play that character because you didn't like her. And they, Naughty Dog, Neil Druckmann, went so hard in the paint to make us like that character it's almost like a slap in the face to all the people that enjoyed that character. It's like saying, hey, I'm a huge Hal Jordan fan. Let's kill off Hal Jordan, replace him with another character, and just tell you how superior that character is to Hal Jordan. Oh, wait a minute. DC's done that, and Marvel's done that a lot of times. And how did that take? It didn't take well. People don't like that. They don't want to say, oh, this character's all superior to the character you've grown and loved. They didn't give us any time to warm up to the Abby character either. It was so sudden and it was just constantly in your face. For example, you'd be killing dogs as Ellie, but Abby, for some reason, oh, so wonderful the dogs. Everything was just ah in your face, like Abby, like Abby, like Abby. We're going to give her everything. You got to like Abby. You don't know what you're missing. You've got to like Abby. And then the turnaround we talked about in another video, the censorship. How the heck did they get away with that stuff in this game while censoring out other stuff like a uh, lady in panties? in another game a full-blown sex scene compared to that it makes no sense it just seems there are a lot of things and behind the scenes pushing here to how did this get through it just makes everyone scratch your head but i would recommend if you haven't watched that video watch the angry joe video review that game i think he summarizes it really well and if we look at the metacritic scores once again even with metacritic trying to remove a lot of the negative scores it still really pales it's bad yes the sales were phenomenal in this game we expected that but look and the week two rates usually drop significantly that's understandable too don't get me wrong there but the drop was more significant on the last of us 2 than normal and the buy the reselling of wanting to sell that game back and the backlash that way is higher than normal too so what happened i think the beast between the pre-orders people really wanting this game then they started to see what it really was and as I said, though, the graphics were phenomenal, the, the audio was great, the game mechanics were good, the length of the game was adequate. People just didn't like the story, and it makes you not want to play that game, let alone not want to play it again a second time. It was really a slap in your face, which makes you wonder, well, they're probably going to be a Last of Us 3, let's be honest, after this, but what direction are they going to take it? How are they going to hit us now? It's like they wanted to make sure they gave us the shock value but they did it in such a wrong way, it turned off more people than making them want to continue to play the game and want the game. What can they do in The Last of Us 3 to course correct this? I honestly don't know, but I think a lot of great points were handled by Angry Joe in this, of giving everything to Abby, really forced this character on us. A lot of the side characters and everything, too, they just didn't didn't have any way to grab to you know grab onto us. So we didn't go, oh, wow, I really like the side character. There really wasn't a whole lot of good to them. So they didn't expand on the Last of Us universe either. Only thing they really did was take away by killing a lot of characters, not giving us any more good side character character development, and really not leaving us with a whole lot to like when the game ended. You know, bad endings tend to ruin good games. We, we've seen that in games like Last... Uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, I'm thinking, I was just about to say The Last of Us because of this game, go figure. <laughs> but we've seen it in a lot of other games. One, for example, is Rage. Rage was a pretty good game, but boy, did that ending absolutely suck. Mass Effect did that too. People hated the ending. It takes a good game, takes you really out of it, and tarnishes it. The last thing you remember about that game is that ending and how it failed, and that turns a lot of people off. Well, that's my thoughts. What I'd like to know is your thoughts too. But before I head off too, I want to make sure I ask you one quiz question for the no prize. So for today's video question here, once again, the first person to answer this question in the comments down below correctly, don't look it up by the way, gets the no prize. If you're not really familiar with the no prize is, look it up. All right, so today's question for this video is which villainous was created by Doc Ock? Once again, which villainous uh, villain there, which villainous was created by Doc Ock? I'll give you a hint, virtual reality. <laughs>
<laughs> I look forward to seeing that answer below and your thoughts on The Blast of Us 2 and what Joe, Angry Joe, thought of it. Was he right? Did you disagree with him? I appreciate you watching. Until next time, keep it frugal. I want to make sure I take a moment to thank the people that helped make this video possible. I consider you producers of this channel and of this show. Without your support, these videos would not be possible. So I'd like to thank Rags, Comic Boom, Pop Size, The Frag Minion, Warren JB, Lynch Nut, David Ossenwitz, sorry if I mispronounced your name, and a penny for your dimes. I also want to thank the people that like to remain anonymous and anybody else that has contributed to this channel in the past. Without your support, these videos would not be possible. If you find yourself in a position you can help and you want to see your name here too as a producer credit, go ahead and look down in the links below. There will be a Patreon, a subscribe star, as well as a one-time donation, and you can see your name up here too. Thank you.